Hey, I'm gonna do a update of my greenhouse. As you can see, with all the plants growing everywhere, it's gonna be hard to get a nice, good shot from the outside. Let's give you a little different angle from here. Hey, let's do this update to my greenhouse. I've had my greenhouse now for two years. And it has been extremely enjoyable. Now, my bows are constructed out of cedar and spruce, unfortunately. I couldn't get cedar in the stripping. But, with everything being, and the base of this is made out of treated lumber. Over here I have my aquaponics tanks, which I'll show you in a minute. And over here, this is mostly hydroponics on this side. These are my Dutch buckets. Now under this side I just have water tanks. They're just there for mass and weight. According to the county statutes, if I make a footer, I need a permit. If I just set it on the ground, I don't need a permit. So this is why I have the base built like this and I'm using water tanks as weight to hold this down. As a note, I was in here when a small tornado came through and it did not rock at all. <laughs> the base is all made out of treated lumber. And if you look back at my videos, you'll see how I constructed them. Now inside here, I don't use any nasty pesticides. I have my army of little critters you can see them there we got tree frogs chameleons toads skinks there he is you can see him he's eating a bug right now but I've decided to go and redo my strawberry system and I wanted to incorporate some herbs and other helpful plants into it Now down here, this is some more herbs I'm going to be incorporating. But most of these are shrub roses that I'm going to be planting outside that I've all started from cuttings. These are some grow beds, hydroponic grow beds, modular that I showed how to make. And they are excellent for rooting plants. Okay. Down here, these roses, these are less than a month old. They're already rooting in, and as you can see, some of them are actually sprouting new growth. Now, I'm using expanded clay now in the upper sections for better drainage. First two years, I used perlite, and after about a year and a half, it started clogging up. So I'm hoping this works better. Now as my main hydroponic reservoir, I have a 55 gallon drum with the top cut out and I fill it up to about 45 gallons. One of my favorite herbs is this Cuban oregano. It seems to put off a lot of odors, and it's actually a very pleasant odor too, but the little buggies don't like it. Now this is my ice cream banana. It's amazing how quick they grow. <laughs> I've cut it off twice now. What I do is 
in the spring, early spring, I'll cut the thing off and it'll just regrow. It's great. This is an example of the ecosystem in here. I don't know if you can see him. Let's see if we can get him to jump. He's there. There he goes. I have, in here, we've got toads, skink, frogs, uh, tree frogs, we got chameleons, uh, lily pond, or post lily, post lizards. I also have praying mantis, occasional ladybugs. It's a wonderful ecosystem. Mm. Over here, this is another NFT system. It's off of one of my aquaponic tanks. Seems to be excellent for rooting plants. Here I'm um, just started about a month ago. I put these blueberry plants in. And in a month's time, okay, I've only lost about four plants. So I'm very confident that I'll have a lot of them rooting. Now all it is is just four inch pipe, three inch hole cut in it. And for the purpose of this, I take a two inch cup, I drill out the bottom of a three inch cup and drop it in. That way it reaches bottom. My temperature in here today is about 86 degrees there, which isn't bad. I have some grow lights in here. Yes, I do have to supplement my uh, lighting in my greenhouse. And I'll show you a, a drone view of my yard to show you why. Yes, there is a house in there. <laughs> and my greenhouse is in there. But there's very little space to put a greenhouse in where you would have sun. So this was actually the best optimal sunspot in the yard, but I still need to supplement some light. I could cut some trees, but it's a trade-off. So if I cut the trees, I pay more in cooling costs in the house. So I, I went with LED grow lights, and I've got six grow lights there, six over there, I got one there, two there, and on this side, I have two on the bottom and three up top. Besides the fact that all of my fluorescent lighting is actually LED grow lights as well. Power consumption wise, not bad with LEDs. Okay. Now, I want to show you an upper view here. This is the roof. Now, on my roof, I've got polycarbonate, and yes, there is more cedar support. Now, the closer I get to level, the closer the support levels, the support beams are, and that's only to keep the polycarbonate from warping. Another one of my bug patrol. As for just supplemental heat, which I don't need very often in South Georgia, I do have a little Dynaglow heater. And it's just to keep it from freezing in here. Or, well, actually, to keep it up high enough because of the aquaponics but it really doesn't have to run that much down here between all of the water barrels all the way around to hold heat 
and the position of it, it actually stays pretty warm in here. Now I've got two circulation fans going. They're high velocity fans that I got from Maynard's. And I got two of the same type of fans as exhaust fans. I've got them hooked to an attic exhaust fan thermostat. Okay? The reason I went with these Maynard fans is because they're about 50 bucks a piece, but I look at them as modular. Because that way I can keep one on spare. And if any one of these four fans goes out, I can just easily replace it. Now all of my lights are on timer, all of my pumps are on timer. I try to automate everything. Wired everything through the fuse panel. And those are my switches. Now I have banks of sockets going down each side. Okay, for this side mostly for pumps and uh, air pumps. This side just for lighting and hydroponic pumps. Now my Dutch bucket system, which is doing quite well, better than I expected really, is setting fruit. And this is summer here, which is Actually, a little unusual, okay? It's usually too hot. But, they're doing well. I'm testing out these varieties in here. Now that's black opal, sweet aperitif, rosella, and that's rosella as in cherry tomato. The rest of these are hybrids. That's edox, grenadera, Margold, Monero, Rebelski. Now these are not very old and as you can see they're doing quite well. The reservoir is a 30, I think it's 32 gallon, 35 gallon cooler. I don't know, 150 quart cooler, whatever that comes out to. I can't think of it off the top of my head, but I've got a recirculation pump going, and every one of these gets their normal supply. I probably could put some more perlite on top of some of them. As you can see, some of them are collecting a little algae, and I'm not real happy about that, but, but everything is starting to bloom. So, I'm quite excited to see what happens. Now, I don't have high hopes for summertime in here, but if something puts fruit on in here during the summer, I will be ecstatic. Now, on the ground here, all I use is large river pebbles. Okay, the ground underneath I built up with uh, red clay and then I put two layers of plastic on top of that and then I put the pebbles on. So far that has seemed to work great. Now as far as my aquaponics go, They're being a little shy. This is goldfish aquaponics. Can't see them, they're not coming out. And the last thing I'm gonna put on this video is I recommend getting a bug zapper if you have any doors or windows that get open during the day. Even if you don't do that, if you have standing water of any sort or water sitting around of any sort, you will have mosquitoes.
this is just an easy way to get rid of them. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, put them in the bottom. All right, thank you.